All right. Well, look, why don't we uh, kick this off? Um, delighted to be here with everybody. Um, as you all know, uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center has tried to make Thanksgiving gatherings a bit of a tradition. And while we do not have the benefit of being together with uh, so many of you in person like we did last year, we've decided to improvise. And I think improvisation will be actually a theme of today's uh, event. I expect there's going to be a lot of audibles called at the line anytime you got a dozen members of Congress <laughs> pretending to show up at the same time. You know, that always requires a little bit of uh, nimbleness. But we um, had a really great experience last year. I think last year our imagination was that Thanksgiving was one of those rare moments when different generations and ideologies and people from different regions all actually had to sit down together and talk to each other. And so last year we really kind of focused on just the challenge of how do you have a good political conversation with your family, right? Our view was if, if families can't talk about the issues they care about, it's hard to expect that you know, all of our elected representatives are gonna make that work. Um, we obviously uh, don't have that same option this year. And so this year we started to really think with everything that's just we kind of grind it on the country in these really difficult moments where our democracy feels like it just might not be able to hold up. We started thinking, well, what is it that really unites us all as Americans? And what are the deepest values that we can really call upon? And it occurred to us that um, a warm slice of pie wasn't a bad place to start. So what we were able to do this year was connect with a number of the members of Congress we've just had a great time working with. We were able to send some some pies out. Not sure how the post office is recovering from the election, but hopefully several <laughs> of you have um, received those. We also uh, had really the uh, opportunity and honor to make some donations to a number of food banks around the country. Uh, we could not coordinate those with you, but they were geographically relevant choices. And what we are uh, trying to just do here for a little bit of time today is just you know, share a couple of the thoughts about the things that we are actually still very thankful for and talk a little bit about our imagination for what we can do next year to start to move the country forward. The members of Congress on the phone are mostly members from our American Congressional Exchange. This is a program where Democrats and Republicans spend a couple of days in each other's districts. Uh, I think Derek Kilmer, who took one of our original trips said, you know, if you wanna know where someone's coming from, it's actually really great to see where they come from. And that's kind of been the abiding insight um, behind this program, which we think has actually done a lot to create kind of the, the intangibles, right? The, the soft skills that enable people to actually trust each other enough to venture a creative idea or actually, you know, move the country forward. And so we're taking advantage of that. We also have a couple of, you know, BPC recidivists, those of you who just keep coming back to our programs, <laughs> and we uh, appreciate that a great deal. So we'll be turning to our members of Congress in just a moment. Um, but I think uh, we really wanted to focus on the power of food, right? I mean, we all have an incredibly diverse country and while that at times is challenging, I think one of the moments that um, it's really inspiring is when we think about those kinds of cultural differences that um, can bring us all together. We also want to think a little bit about fun. And so we've created our second annual uh, family Thanksgiving guide to a healthy democracy. I don't know if we can get that on screen or not, but we've put together this, um, holiday guide and we are sharing that around with many thank you salute um you know it has some some substantive issues right up front right we suggest that families spend a little time talking about issues like immigration and climate change and health care um we try to figure out you know what are some of the shared values and core beliefs that unite us as a country and so while we are going to be potentially um distant this thanksgiving we felt like it was important to you know give people an opportunity to really in a constructive way lean into those discussions. And then if you could just toss the back up for a sec, this is, you know, this is the fun part. Um, we have a word search for the kids. Um, we have, you know, coronavirus, remedivir, fracking, Amy Coney Barrett. You know, it's a, it's a good educate, Fauci, Zoom. You know, it's, a good, it's the kind of the issues that really will motivate kids to want to um, ask tough questions to their parents and a little bit of trivia. And so, I should now actually begin our program and um, just to get us started again, as we really thought about the power of pie, I turned to one of the friends of BPC who um, is just a delightful human being, Jose Andres, many of you know, who is a, people call him a celebrity chef, but he's really much more than that. He's a bit of a national treasure who has just poured himself and his life into so many communities in need. He's actually in Honduras now, but he was able to share 
a five minute uh, video, it's just his reflections on just the critical importance of pi to American society. So we're gonna hear from Jose and then we will start to interact with uh, the members of Congress who are on the line. So if you can cue up Jose. People of America, congressmen and congresswomen, I am Chef Jose Andres. It's great to be here with you and all the members of Congress who are sharing messages of bipartisanship, empathy, and respect. You know, this is a time to think about what unites us versus what divides us. We, the people, all American, under one flag. It seems that sometimes there is so much dividing us, but you and I, we know that in reality, there is even more that keep us all together. More than anything, it's food that has the power to bring people to the table. I will say shorter walls and longer tables is the way to move forward. It's a plate of food in difficult times that shows that somebody else cares and that tomorrow may be a better little tomorrow. And during Thanksgiving, it's food that brings our families together and reminds us to be grateful for what we have. Even when sometimes the turkey <laughs> may be dry, or the stuffing may be cold, or the mashed potato may be a little bit looking like blue. But it's the good moments that we always remember around a table with the people we care for. So on that spirit is why I love that the Bipartisan Policy Center has decided to focus on pie this year. Well, we may be disagreeing on politics, which is healthy, done with respect. But there is something about the warm piece of pie that is truly universal and I know can be bringing all of you together more than ever. We like to say that things are as an American as apple pie, right? Well, did you know that the first pies were actually enjoyed by ancient Egyptians going back 6,000 years before Christ? Also, the Romans and the Greeks made some big improvements. But it was the Spanish, yep, people like me, who perfected the savory cheese pie at some point around the 13th century. <laughs> My cheese pie is unbelievable. One day I hope to cook it for you. But then, in the year 1545, is when we can say that the first recipe for sweet fruit pie was Polish in England before being brought across the Atlantic at the time of the American Revolution. So we know that famous pie lovers included Mrs. Martha Washington or luminaries like Mark Twain. So, pies play a big role in pop culture. From Friends to Stand By Me to Game of Thrones, we've seen pies all over the place. And the song American Pie by Don McLean is one of the most popular in modern history. Even if the Thanksgiving turkey will be dry this year and next, at least we always have apple, pumpkin, and pecan pie to keep us coming back. And that's why it's so important to celebrate the traditions that makes us who we are. Even in this era of political polarization, we must come together to the table and find solutions to the biggest issues facing Americans. This Thanksgiving, there are record numbers of hungry families in our country. There are millions of people who are finding the American dream to be a little too far from the rich. So, let's be thankful for what we have. Let's put our differences aside and let's unite to work as hard for those we don't know as for those we do. Together, we can build on the important work of the BPC 
to celebrate bipartisanship and create a better tomorrow. Thank you all. Sorry about the uh, slight delay between uh, sound and voice. Hope everybody could hear that all right. Um, I was just charmed that Jose managed to weave in democracy, unity, Game of Thrones. I thought that was a nice, uh, a nice combination. So look, let us um, get started. We are really um, just honored to have a number of members of Congress, folks who probably could use a couple of days to rest up before we get into what is going to be an incredibly important uh, several months for our democracy. And I see uh, Representative Jack Bergman. Jack was one of the very first people to take one of our American Congressional Exchange trips. For those of you who uh, have not had the pleasure of spending much time in the Upper Peninsula, uh, it's probably starting to get a little, uh, little chilly up there, Jack. But um, I was just going to ask you to just lead us off with either something that you're feeling thankful for or something you're optimistic about uh, heading into next year. Well, you know, thanks so much. First of all, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. All right, that's uh, the old uh, military pilot in me. When we do a radio check, we still get a visual on it too. You know, I'm thankful every day for the love that God gives us every day and it allows us to share it. And for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because there is nothing more uniting than love of the Lord and love in general. Because nothing good comes out of hate. So to, to do what you do, even if you have to disagree with someone, to do it with love and not out of hate, that's the best you can hope for. Jack, that's a really a wonderful place to get started. And as you, uh, you're kind of a policy wonk, so what, you know, what is your ambition for the, uh, the first bill you're going to co-sponsor next year? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm very involved in, in Veterans Affairs, uh, and that was my first committee choice four years ago. So I'm looking forward to moving more bills, multiple bills, with all my members on the Veterans Affairs Committee. But the bill I'm outside of Veterans Affairs is an infrastructure bill that actually enables all of America, uh, rural and remote, to have high-speed broadband. That's the infrastructure of the 21st mm -hmm. century. And there's nothing more bipartisan than that. The internet does not know political ideology. All it knows is where it goes and where it has problems getting. Thank you for that. I, I expect we're gonna hear more about that. Whenever we have our virtual ACE trip, someone's signal gets a little bit wonky and everyone starts talking about rural broadband. So um, it's always just a real pleasure to have you with us, Congressman, so thank you. I wanna see if we can get uh, Dean Phillips into the mix. Uh, Congressman Phillips was also a member of our Thanksgiving dinner last year. I believe many of the folks last year actually left an impeachment hearing and walked across the street together, which you know, showed the promise of uh, a good, healthy meal. Um, for those of you who don't know, Congressman Phillips is from the Minneapolis area. Um, it's gonna be a big deal on Black Friday as, uh, he, as the uh, Mall of the Americas in his district. Um, but Congressman, um, you know, share with us something you're feeling good about the country. Of all the things to be known for, the Mall of America, my goodness. Uh, Jason, thank you, and, and to all of you. Um, I have so much to be thankful for. Uh, of course, on a personal level, my wonderful family. Uh, as a Gold Star son, uh, Jack, I uh, revere your service and sacrifices. And as someone who traveled to the Middle East um, last year during Christmas to visit our troops, uh, left an indelible mark on me. Uh, the blessings that were afforded, uh, our freedoms, uh, which I do not take for granted, but I think too many Americans still do. And I have to say to you all that as I reflect on the years ahead, especially the months and year right in front of us, you know, I find myself expressing gratitude to so many of our foremothers and forefathers that have made what we do now possible uh, in this great country. And I just hope that future generations uh, will look back at us, uh, all of you on this call, the members of Congress, uh, those with the Bipo Bipartisan Policy Center, and others look back on us with gratitude for what we achieved during what is probably uh, one of the most challenging times of our lifetime. Uh, I didn't anticipate these days, but I come to Congress with the same intention of my brothers and sisters on this call, which is there is good in everybody. Uh, but you need to create spaces and places to find it, uh, to break bread, uh, to share your life stories, 
And that's why I want to thank you, Jason, uh, for organizing this, because it is one of those very rare occasions and opportunities to do so. Um, and one of the great blessings of my service in Congress has been not just finding common ground with people across the aisle, uh, but literally loving some of my brothers and sisters um, on the other side. And that's in no small part because of your work. And as families gather in a different way this Thanksgiving around our country, I hope they endeavor to do the same thing because uh, we can, we should, we must. And I share my love with all of you. And having invoked the word love, I am drawn to think about two members of our American Congressional Exchange who've actually become somewhat of a vaudeville act. That, of course, would be uh, Salud Carvajal and Don Bacon. Um, we've taken them on the road now uh, a couple of times. And, uh, you know, I wonder if maybe the two of you would reflect a little bit on your, um, you know, your ACE visit together and uh, what you think together you might be able to accomplish in the coming year. Representative Bacon? Okay, I'll, I'll start. Salute's on. He was on mute there, I could tell. Um, so, it, frankly, this, the trip with the BPC was Salute uh, really built on a friendship that we already had. Uh, Salute and I have been friends pretty much from when we first got elected. Uh, we went to Harvard. We did all that stuff together. We're fellow veterans. And so we had a friendship to begin with, and then the trip built on that. And I regularly introduce uh, Salute or talk about Salute as my best friend in the house. And I said, we may not always vote the same, but uh, we would be college buddies <laughs> if, we were, if we were still in college. And, uh, but that's given us opportunities to work on things in the Armed Services Committee and the Agriculture Committee. We're on the same committees together. And there's so many different bills that we have co-sponsored and supported each other on uh, in both committees. And so when it comes to the business side of what we do, uh, the dividends are big uh, there for our two committees and what we work on. I Salute's the first guy I go to on almost every bill uh, when, it's, when we're working on something, and I think he does the same thing here with me. So I yield to Salute. Well, I, I think Bacon, ditto what Bacon said. Um, for me, one of the real joys of uh, being in Congress is having developed uh, what I know now as lifelong relationships, and especially across the aisle. So I'm very thankful for the Bipartisan Policy Center for continuing to promote this value of bipartisanship. Uh, Don and I have been friends, we travel. Uh, I think we've gone uh, on four or five delegations now. Um, got to know, meet each other's families. And it's been just a real joy working with Don. Certainly we don't agree on everything, obviously, but we have a genuine friendship and respect for one another. And uh, it, it has just been a, a, a real treat uh, to get to know Don. But you know what? I think we share similar values in that even though we have strong uh, views and policy or ideological views in certain respects, at the end of the day, I think we're decent human beings and we try to live by that, where we try to work through any differences we have to see if we could find common ground and, and where we disagree, agree to disagree. But... I think have enough respect for one another that that is what prevails at the end of the day. Uh, the affection we have for our friendship and one another. And I hope others that have participated through this program continue to build on, on similar relationships. Uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about bipartisanship. It's another thing to model the way and really believe in it. And I, I so much appreciate Don. And uh, not to mention he's funnier than hell. Uh, but, you know, being that we're both veterans, when we travel and we do, uh, we talk about uh, public policy regarding to our national security, HASC, uh, House Armed Services issues. I love traveling with Don because, one, he was, a, he's a, he was a former general, and he is so darn knowledgeable that I feel like I get warp speed ahead in my knowledge of all these issues that, I, you know, I had more of an elementary understanding of. So uh, it's been really great, Don, getting to know you. And uh, I'm, th I'm thankful for these bipartisan opportunities. My family, our troops that are protecting our freedoms day in and day out, the Bipartisan Policy Center. And lastly, as somebody who had COVID, uh, thankful for the vaccinations that are coming forward. I feel my wife and I were part of the lucky ones but there's many people who haven't been lucky that those vaccinations are gonna be extremely important to. So 
Uh, very thankful for the efforts we've done regarding the vaccinations for COVID. Thank you, Salud. And, and Don, it's uh, really a pleasure working with both of you. Whenever we're feeling a little depressed, you know, I mean, it can be tough getting out of bed every single day at the Bipartisan Policy Center. We uh, love to come talk to you guys. You always lift our spirits. Um, so there are a few more folks on the phone. Um, I think there's Representative uh, Virginia Fox with us. Uh, can you hear me? Sure can. So just so all you know who are not members of Congress, Congressman Fox is from the Winston-Salem area. She has done a, a trip with uh, Susan Davis from San Diego and visited each other. The one thing I'm told about you, Congressman Fox, is you drive very fast, which is also consistent with your desire to get things done. So um, share with us, if you would, you know, anything you're feeling thankful for or something you'd like to see the Congress and the administration working on together next year. Well, um, I don't think I really drive that fast, but Susan went with me from uh, the Winston-Salem part of my district. That's not where I live, but we went from there up to the mountains. I wanted her to see my smallest and most rural county, and the road up there is very, very windy and uh, goes straight up, basically. So uh, we did a lot of traveling. Um, but it was, uh, it, was, it was a great trip. I was really grateful that Susan was able to come and I was able to go to San Diego, um, visiting with each other in our district to help us to understand a lot. I think, uh, I think she felt really, really um, good about meeting the real down to earth country people that she met uh, there. I'm thankful, first of all, that the good Lord's allowed me to live in this country. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times a day I say, thank you, Lord, for letting me live in the freest country in the world. Uh, I, I honestly believe that's our, the thing we most need to th be thankful for, because none of this would be possible were it not for the fact that we live where we live. And so I am extremely grateful for that. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve in Congress. A lot's being made about how many women got elected, particularly Republican women, um, this year. And I'm grateful for all the women in Congress, frankly, because I think we bring important perspectives. But when I got elected, I was the uh, fourth woman ever from North Carolina. And uh, I think we were in the 80s. That, that was 16 years ago. And only 80-some women um, had been elected at the time. So we have come a long way in a short period of time. And so I tell my, my constituents and others when I show them around the Capitol that we're a fairly rare group. And so I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And I always like to talk about it from my background. I grew up very poor in a house with no electricity and no running water. And again, this country allows people like me to be elected to Congress. So I don't go a day without being grateful for that. And I'm thankful also that I live exactly where I live because I think this is the most beautiful part of the country. And um, I look forward to the opportunity to continue to serve. I'm delighted to hear the other members. So I'm not gonna to say too much more, but I will say this inspires me to um, sit down and get to know some of the members on the other side of the aisle. I too have worked across the aisle with, not just with Susan, but with others. And I explain to people at home all the time, they say to me, well, how can you stand those people? How can you work with them? And I explain to them that we're not that different as human beings. We have different ideas. We'll argue very, very vociferously our uh, differences in philosophy, but when we walk off the floor, at least when I walk off the floor, I leave all the policy on the floor. I have no hard feelings toward any other member of Congress. And as Dean Phillips said, I love some of the members of Congress um, and I'm happy to profess my love. I appreciate what the Bipartisan Policy Center does. I will mention that we have a bipartisan prayer group that meets every week also. And that's very good. Whatever we can do to promote bipartisanship, we need to do. Because when we do get to know each other as human beings, we're better as legislators. So let me stop there. 
Thank you, Congresswoman. So, you know, again, with the theme of affection um, so prominent, I think I need to focus on one of the real um, BBC bromances, which would be uh, Congressman Lowenthal and Graves. Um, you could call this an odd couple, right? Not necessarily two folks you would imagine just having that kind of natural kismet, but uh, great trip uh, essentially to the bayou, right? Congressman Graves from uh, Baton Rouge managed to, uh, with a lot of hard work, get an ethics approval to take uh, Congressman Lowenthal deep sea fishing. I think we had to have like a marine biologist on board just to kind of make the cut. Um, Congressman Lowenthal then reciprocated and had Congressman Graves out to Long Beach. Um, a lot of conversation about coastal issues and infrastructure, but Congressman Graves, let me just turn to you if you wanted to share, you know, you got the mood of this, something that uh, you're optimistic about coming into next year. Yeah, or sure. About uh, Alan. Uh, well, hey, first, uh, thanks. And I, and I did see my, my good friend uh, Lowenthal on there a little while ago, but it looks like he, he disappeared. Um, but, uh, but Jason, I, I appreciate y'all uh, throwing this together. And, and, and I think it's always important uh, to reflect for a few minutes and be thankful. Uh, and and uh, so, so I, I want to quickly say that I, I, I want to reiterate some of the comments that Jack Bergman, Virginia Fox, and, and Dean Phillips and others made about just how great it is to be able to, to live in a country like America, to have the freedoms we do, and to be in a position where you can represent people and, and actually solve problems in this amazing uh, government structure that we have. In regard to next year, um, you know, it, it, I've had a chance to go around and meet a lot of the new members of Congress that are coming in, Republicans and Democrats. And I love the fact that you have so many folks that are coming in with so much energy, so many new ideas, and, um, and really excited to be able to just really hit the ground running with them and be able to, to work on some of the key challenges that our nation is facing. I can't, get, as, on, I can't get a picture of me, but I can hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so what I need to do is- And as, uh, hey, hey, Doc, you gotta hit- Hey, Doc, you got to hit mute. There you go. Um, but, uh, but, but, but to be able to address some of the great challenges we have, like, like addressing some of our infrastructure needs, making sure our communities are more resilient, and, um, and making sure that we just allow people to, to, to achieve their maximum potential um, and having government uh, serve as a partner with people as opposed to, a, to, a, to, a, to an obstacle. So, uh, so those are some of the things looking forward to the next year. And, uh, and I do, again, want to give a shout out to, to my buddy, Alan. Uh, Lowenthal from California. Uh, I really do appreciate him and his wife, Debbie, uh, hosting us and coming down to Louisiana. We, we had a great time. Congressman Lowenthal, I understand that you kind of go on witness protection program about this relationship with Graves and you're, you're off screen now, but you can be heard. So if, uh, if you wanted to share a couple of quick thoughts while we have you. Maybe having some technical issues, Congressman Lowenthal. All right, well, we're going to give uh, Alan a minute or two to try and work that out and see they, if they uh, need broadband in Long Beach. Yeah, it's a real, it's a rural little rural town called Long Beach. Well, so let me turn now to Congressman uh, Darren Soto, who joined us uh, early from the Orlando. Orlando, Orlando. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take advantage. Of, now that we got Congressman Lowenthal right on screen. Wait, I'm going to shut. All right, I'm off now. I'm back, okay? Can you see me? You can see and hear you. You're looking good. All right. Uh, well, first of all, it's great to be here. Uh, I have to tell you that um, he may not know it, but I, have, I love to listen to Garrett speak, especially in our committees. We don't always agree but I think he has so much to offer, and I learned so much from listening to him. Uh, and I really appreciate his presence. Uh, I think he brings a, a, a committed, thoughtful, high energy. He talks about meeting all these new members that are high energy. There is nobody higher energy than Garrett Graves. So uh, this has been a great experience. Uh, and uh, I also want to say, I don't know if others, uh, Salud mentioned that he, also, he had had COVID-19. I am very thankful for my own health. Uh, my son had COVID-19, scared the life out of me. He's doing well now, but it was a little frightening. And um, so I, I, I'm just thankful that we're moving forward 
as a nation towards a vaccine and that this pandemic will soon be coming, hopefully, to an end. And I wish everyone this Thanksgiving good health, um, good family support, uh, love from each other, and um, I'm just really glad to be here. Thank you. What is that I'm on your not, face there, Alan? Huh? What is that on your face? I don't recognize you. What is that? That's a, that's salud. A, is that a beard? The COVID that's beard. The beard salud. Yes. Yes. COVID beard. Yes. Maybe, maybe you didn't hear. Alan was stranded on an island for like two months. They just found him. Yeah, that's great. Yes. <laughs> Tom Hanks movie about that. All right, look, I think the only uh, member who I'm aware of who has not yet spoken, and then I think there may be a couple of folks who want to share a couple other thoughts is... Uh, Congressman Soto from the Orlando area. So much uh, fun we've had working with Congressman Soto. And I always just let people know that, you know, before he was a member of Congress, he was the front man uh, for the band called the Orange Creek Riders. And if you Google them, you can actually, you know, they're pretty good. They're actually pretty good. So, you know, it's good to know that if the Congress thing doesn't work out in the long run, you got a place to land, Congressman. So, Please, uh, love to hear just what you're thinking about next year and anything you're thankful for. Thanks, Jason. And first of all, uh, thank you for putting together the virtual trip with uh, Jim Banks and I. Uh, we had some great discussions on, uh, on jobs, on the Paycheck Protection Program, on um, helping out with uh, uh, making child care more affordable to have a more inclusive workplace. I thought all those were great discussions. And uh, even though we only got to travel virtually before that, Jim and I got to travel to Afghanistan. So we've gotten to spend a, a good amount of time together and I have a lot of respect for him. So thanks for putting us together on that. I'm also thankful for this pie. Did anybody get these pies, right? Yeah. You shipped it across the country. No one mentioned it. There we go. Maybe I missed it in the very beginning, but that is an impressive feat right there. We're going to put you in charge of the vaccine soon after that logistical uh, uh, Genius. Uh, so I'm thankful, and, and Alan said it already, I'm, I'm thankful for uh, two, now it looks like three vaccines that uh, are over 90% effective. I'm thankful that Congress came together in four major bills, hopefully a fifth soon, uh, to help combat COVID-19. People are going to look back on bills like the CARES Act, uh, like they did the New Deal back in uh, the 30s uh, coming out of uh, the Great uh, Recession or the Great Depression uh, and how Congress did come together uh, in, in those major uh, relief efforts. Uh, and I'm thankful that my family and, and many of my friends are healthy uh, and, uh, you know, following the rules to uh, try to stay healthy as we have to travel to Washington, many of us, and uh, going out to different di events in our district. Uh, and I pray for the continued health of all of you. And also, I, I pray that next year not only breaks the fever of the coronavirus, but uh, a fever of hyperpartisanship that uh, start, is starting to wane now that the election's over with. Uh, you know, I really think with uh, so many major issues going into next year dealing with uh, the coronavirus and economic relief, that this is uh, going to be a time uh, when we can come together to do some unfinished business should it not occur in the lame duck session. And I know that uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center, as well as several of my fellow problem solvers uh, who are on, we will be ready to go to, to help out. So thank you everybody for having me. And it's an honor to be part of this uh, great group. And thanks for the time. So the, the last, or almost the last formal part of this program is something that I'm just delighted by. And that is to ask uh, Capri Cafaro to share a little bit about this wonderful, just off the press's book, United We Eat. We are gonna be sharing these with uh, members of the call, but it is just a fantastic compilation of recipes from political leaders. And um, you know, we do a lot of book events at the Bipartisan Policy Center. And you know, right around this time, if we're doing a book event, if Dashiell and Trent Lott are writing a book about you know, crisis or something, you know, we always say, hey, it's a great you know, holiday gift. This is actually a great holiday gift. You know, those other books, not so much, but you know, you kind of kind of say it, but this is actually a fantastic book. And Capri, just as we think about the ways in which um, food can bring us together, this was an idea clearly you had uh, long ago. Um, in addition to being an Ohio State legislator, I'm told you're a great cook. So 
tell us a little bit about your book. Thank you very much, Jason, and, and thank you uh, for uh, including me in this really exciting program this evening. Uh, I received one of those lovely placemats last year from BPC. Uh, I am also a BPC fellow, which I am, I am incredibly proud of, um, because the work that you do, and as it's been exhibited by each one of you this evening on uh, that has presented as members of Congress, the fact that you all have an opportunity facilitated by BPC to visit one's districts um, really does deepen that understanding. Um, as Jason mentioned, um, I am a former uh, legislator in my home state of Ohio, which is where I am now, five generations from Northeastern Ohio. Um, I spent 10 years uh, in, in the Ohio Senate, four of which I was minority leader. And um, during that period of time, the first thing I did when I became minority leader in 2009 uh, was speak to the president of the Senate and ask him uh, if we could have bipartisan sponsored, dual sponsored authored bills. Prior to 2009, believe it or not, the Ohio Senate did not actually have bills uh, that were dual authored by Democrats and Republicans together. We only, like obviously all of you have in Congress. So because I've always positioned myself, I've always believed that I'm a public servant first, um, you know, I'm a pragmatist, uh, like many of you are looking for ways to solve problems, putting partisanship aside. So that was one of the first acts that I did as minority leader. But as I went through my career, we have term limits in, in, Ohio, in the legislature in Ohio. But as I went through my career, when I would work with members across the aisle um, on uh, pretty substantial pieces of legislation, whether it was Medicaid reform, prior authorization for health insurance and whatnot, what I would do when we would meet certain legislative benchmarks, I would bring in a pie. Okay, this, this, this program this evening is about pie. I am bipartisan, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see this, my little tea towel here, this is bipartisan. And so it was a way, I used food as a way to bring people together um, in a very you know, casual manner, build fellowship between Democratic and Republican members and staff. And so it was from that experience that I decided I wanted to embark on um, you know, trying to put a, a book together that not only told the nation's story through food, but also had an opportunity to share individual current and former political leaders, um, their recipes from their individual states, their families, and their anecdotes on how they've used food to bring people together. I'm honored to say that Secretary Glickman uh, submitted a recipe which is in the book. Uh, I understand that uh, former RNC chair, chair Michael Steele is, is on the line as well. He is in the book. 10 layer Smith Island cake. I gotta say I made that 10, 10 layer Smith Island cake for television about a year ago, he and I. That's a lot of layers, let me tell you something right now, uh, to put in about a five minute segment, wow. Um, but so in the spirit of this conversation, um, I, I'm glad that I've had an opportunity. Well, you know, I'd much rather be uh, in the ranks of, of uh, Dashiell and Lott with you know, some kind of a, a very erudite uh, submission this is, I think, an uplifting way to um, you know, launch into the holiday season as we come out of, of you know, the 2020 cycle to, to show that food can be that common denominator. It humanizes us, um, it tells that story. Um, and in the book, you can, you can you know, read a number of them. We have about 26 uh, members uh, or uh, political leaders pretty evenly divided between Democrats and Republicans. And I, person who's worked on health policy for the last 20 years, did actually the other half of the recipe. So I, I tried my hand at recipe development as well. So um, that's the story behind this book. And, and I'm thankful that the BPC and, and some of the other folks involved with BPC um, recognize the power of food and, and building bridges and were willing to participate in the book as well. So Jason, thank you for giving me a few minutes. Thank you, Capri. And there's a little store called Amazon where I feel like you can get these uh, and they're, uh, they're well-priced. So look, it's been really just terrific and fun for us just to have a little bit of time with so many of the members who um, we're so fond of and who we're relying on a whole lot to help us you know, get the democracy moving forward a little bit early next year. Um, I wanna now um, turn this over for a kind of closing pie benediction to um, you know, BPC spiritual leader, who is of course, Dan Glickman. Many of you know uh, former Congressman and Ag Secretary Glickman, but Dan has been really with us from the beginning. And um, you know, when I think about someone who can really combine just deep politics and aesthetics and occasionally even a little bit of humor and a lot of food, I always think of Glickman. So 
I'm going to raise my pie, but Dan, do you uh, want to take a moment and send us out? Uh, unfortunately, Jason, I didn't get the pie, but I brought my own cheesecake. So uh, that's very, you know, very ethnic. That's fine. You know, it's solid. So first of all, I want to say that uh, it's great to see the members here. I served in Congress back shortly after the Civil War, but I have to tell you that uh, it's the greatest job in the world you, uh, you folks have, without question. The most freedom, the most ability to actually do what you want, say what you want, and actually get things done, even in this troublesome time that we, we are sometimes in. And I, I see a few people that Alan Lowenthal and and salute and and others that um, uh, participate in the uh, Don Bacon and the and the Aspen programs that we run. So I thank you. So I'm thankful because tomorrow I will be 76 years old. I've lived 76 years. So I think I'm older than anybody else in this room. Probably I don't want to offend anybody, but I know I'm much older than Capri. Much much older. Um, but I would have to tell you that two, there's two kinds of pies that really get me at this time of year. One is my favorite, which is chicken pot pie. Not a normal pie, but it's the one that's probably the most nutritious. As the former Secretary of Agriculture, I have to worry about nutrition and health. And uh, so uh, that is one that I really like. And nutrition is a big part of the old USDA line. The other one is, uh, I recall my favorite Bible, Bible verse is from the prophet Micah who says, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with my God, with thy God? And so I thought to myself, my other favorite pie is humble pie, which is something that we don't uh, probably eat very much. And humble pie is a, a kind of a metaphor for being forced to apologize and publicly admit our mistakes, our, our errors. And, you know, there is such a thing as humble pie. It was actually made from the entrails of animals, of the, uh, what they call offal, O-F-F-A-L, if you've ever been into a meatpacking plant. They take that and they, some parts of the world, they still make this thing called humble pie. I'm not sure they call it that way. Um, and I'm not recommending it to anybody because I think the pie you sent out is the best pie, Jason. But I would say that in this time of Thanksgiving, it's a pretty good time to look at our past and what we can do in the future, not only to admit our mistakes, but to really go forward and make this country a better place, uh, respecting each other and, and doing the kinds of things that all of you talked about, which is trying to work together in a bipartisan way to solve the problems of our country and earn the respect of our constituents. So saying that, Jason, I toast everybody and thank, thank you and the BPC for everything you do to bring people together. Uh, friendship means a lot to us and the ability to get uh, a good savory pie and a metaphor in there is very consistent true to form so thank you so look everyone I, you know um, I don't get to say it enough but um, you know we just deeply appreciate the ability to work with y'all as Dan said I think it is an incredible opportunity um, but it's an incredibly tough job y'all have and uh, you know our ability to provide a little bit of staff support and hopefully a little bit of moral support um, is really what we look forward to every day. So um, I hope everybody has a, a good holiday. You know the kind of the holidays post elections are supposed to be a time of a little bit of exhale and rest up, um, a little bit of time to forget the election. And so I hope everyone has a chance to be with uh, family and you know, celebrate safely and really eager to get together with y'all on rural broadband, and urban broadband and infrastructure and some smart reforms to the tax code and a lot of work on public health. So um, really, again, it's been a pleasure and honor to work with you and everybody has a, a great Thanksgiving. So, Jason, thank you, thank you. Thank you for getting us to focus on the important things. So thank welcome. You. Here, here. Thank you. Thank you. In closing, Good health to all. I wanted to tell you a funny story in closing. All right. There's always when I that. cut my pie, I cut a piece of it, and my wife and my son were salivating, right, waiting for their piece. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center said that I couldn't share this with the family. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. So it, it, in about five minutes, of course, they were wondering if I was serious or not, but uh, I ended up acquiescing and giving them a piece. But it was great pulling their leg. Try not to alienate families whenever possible, but thank you for doing that uh, on our behalf. All right, everybody, have a great night. Bye. Thank you.
Bye bye. Hard to believe that Happy someone is adversary. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.